Hey guys, I'm about to get started. Now, I'm not going to do a uh, detailed video of taking this thing apart. I will, however, link below in the description the video that I'm going to be watching. The guy pulls this thing apart in about an hour, step by step, every piece. If somebody needs to do this, I definitely recommend the video I'm going to link below. So here's the transmission on the floor before I've taken any ratchets to it. Oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> okay, so four hours later, the case is empty. I got everything laying out, and I have, ex I have inspected everything. I cannot find an obvious problem. I mean, it actually looks pretty good for as many miles as it has on it. I mean, the, the planetary gears, the, 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 the valve body, I mean, things look good in here. So I'm wondering if I don't have a bad torque converter. I'm obviously going to have to do some more research on that. But, I mean, all the bands look good. Nothing's, nothing's obviously broken. The sprags are good. I don't see... The, I mean, the chain's good. The pump's good. See, I was thinking I had a pump problem. But the pump's working just fine. Because it's a lack of fluid from somewhere, so thinking maybe torque converter uh, this is not all for nothing though while I'm in here I am going to order the uh, the new frictions might as well while I got it all open that way we don't uh, have slippage anytime in the near future assuming we get it all back together and back in the car but yeah four hours later I don't see an, an obvious problem with anything I've inspected everything I've pulled out of here so uh, I'm going to do some more research on torque converters. It looks surprisingly good for as many miles as it has. Okay guys, a few days later I got the clutch kit in. I'm going to be putting all new clutches. This is the kit. Uh, let's see, five, five, four, six. Looks like there's 22 different clutch plates. So I'm gonna, tonight I'm going to be rebuilding my clutches. And I also ordered that hold down bracket because I noticed when I took the accumulators out that hose that they said comes dislodged it was dislodged it wasn't completely out but it was far it was maybe that far missing I mean that that's how that's how deep it should go in and it was just the tip of it that was in so I'm fairly certain that that rumbling I was hearing was because my that goes up to the uh, planetary gears were not getting uh, lubrication or getting very poor lubrication because it was very loose. So I ordered that bracket that goes in between these two pipes. If you watch the video below, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the planets, I inspected them, they look good, but that definitely could have been the cause of that rumbling noise. If they weren't getting lubrication, That's I'm 99% sure that's what that noise was. Because when I pulled those, I mean, this thing just fell out. It was no... It was no uh, there, there was no uh, way it was in there far enough to get adequate lubrication. And I should have taken a picture of it. Here's the accumulators here. When I put it back in, I'll be putting that bracket in. So tonight's goal, I'm going to rebuild my clutch packs, which is all this stuff over here. I also want to document. Uh, that guy talks about second clutch, the, uh, the clearance problem. I do have... Glad I thought of that. I do have excessive clearance, just like he says in his video. There, there's a lot of travel, so we'll, we'll see if that goes away once we get this rebuilt. Yeah, there is definitely a big difference between the thickness of the clutches that are coming out and the new plates that are going in. The frictions, I mean, they're like twice as thick, so these are definitely worn out. Second clutch is done, and the clearance room, I mean, it's, it's almost night and day. It's all the way up to the lip. Still loose like it should be for disengagement, but, I mean, you don't have that big gap there. And the old plates... Like I say, they're only about half as thick as the new plates, so second clutch is done. First and third has really a lot of clearance, too. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that, both, I already took these, there's two packs in here, and they are both just excessive travel clearance. Now, on these, the first set of frictions don't look all that bad. They are worn, but they don't look as bad as the first ones. The top frictions actually have a big, big difference. The new, the new plates, again, is, are twice as thick. Okay, first and third is completely rebuilt. Second's rebuilt. All my old uh, frictions over there. We'll get rid of those. And fourth clutch, 
is actually underneath the channel plate, which we won't put that back together until we're putting everything back on top. And uh, there's only two frictions and probably four steels, three or four steels. So, so far so good. We're going to start putting this monster back together. You know, just screwing the accumulator housing back together. And here's that pipe I was talking about. It's connected to this rubber hose down here, which uh, goes up and provides lubrication for the, uh, the planet, the front planet gear. You can see this pipe, how loose. I mean, these other ones are tight up in there. This is supposed to go up, I think, about that far, but... I mean, it is right, it is just right at the lip. Okay, Sonics, I don't know what kind of cheap bullshit you're getting. I barely put any torque on this screw, and it stripped. I don't think the screw stripped, but the the the, the, uh, the threads on the clamp stripped. What the hell? So I'm being advised, if anybody orders this part, you might need to use your own. I just use my own screw and uh, a couple nuts with some lock washers, because I want to be nice and tight. But stripped? Really? What the hell? I am putting in the last of the frictions. Here's the new friction plate. This is for fourth clutch. And there's the old one. Once again, a little bit thicker, probably twice as thick. You know, it's got all of the uh, friction material. And I mean, it took me about four hours to get all this stuff seated in there. All these little individual teeth on all these plates, you have to keep going back and forth until they're until they all lock down in place. So it, it can be quite. Uh, Quite a challenge. I'm um, ready to put the channel plate back on. It's four in the morning. I've been out here for about six hours now. I got the channel plate mounted. I got all the check balls where they're supposed to be. I use some gasket goop on the bottom there to seal that stuff. Uh, there's my pump drive shaft. Goes into the torque converter. Getting ready to put the channel plate on. Did I just say channel plate? I meant valve body. That's the valve body. Okay, we got that on there. I got the two pump screws holding it in. There's only like, I don't know, a hundred more bolts and we're done. <laughs> The worst part's done, though. The worst part is dealing with all that main gearing and getting everything. This is just sitting here and putting putting all the bolts in. Uh, making sure I don't miss anything. Man, it amazes me how much fluid still leaking out of this damn thing. I mean, I have literally gone through 50 or 60 rolls of paper towels during this whole ordeal. The, all of the little nooks and crannies were all the fluid. I mean... I've never done something so messy in my life. The okay, pump is installed. All the bolts are torqued. I think I got everything going here. I just got to put the wiring harness back in. Okay, I got the side of the case completely back together. Everything's tight. Getting ready to put the differential back in. Now, this is where the lubrication wasn't being made. I'm guessing that hose pops up somewhere right inside there and sprays fluid this way and then drips down this hole back into the pan. So none of this was getting lubricated, although it doesn't look bad. I mean, it's not badly chewed up or anything, so... Probably caught it just in the nick of time. So differential's going back in. Parking pole's locked. I'm going to put it in neutral. And this should spin. A little bit of force. Oh, yeah. All right, I've got every bolt back in this puppy. It is put back together. And you know what? I don't know where the hell this bolt goes. I got one bolt. I have watched that damn disassembly video ten times now. This bolt has no place, so I'm guessing it must have just... I mean, I got bolts all over the place because of all of the... So it, it must have just crept over here from from the... Uh, I, I, this bolt doesn't go in there. I, I've looked at this video a hundred times now. So that's the only bolt I got left. That must have, Like I said, it must have... Maybe I picked it up out of my uh, socket thing by mistake or something. I don't know. But anyway, it's back together. I'm on the fence about the torque converter, guys. I mean, I don't know. With finding that lube pipe the way I did, I hate to buy a $200 torque converter if I don't need it. I mean, I could rattle it around. Nothing's shaking around in there. It seats solidly. The seal seems good. I think we're going to go with it and see how it goes. I notice, and I'll have to do some research on this, it looks like there's a bleeder valve. I mean, you have a vent valve here, but there looks like there's a bolt there for... I can only guess it's for a bleeding purposes, so maybe that's what I did wrong putting it back the first time. I didn't bleed the air out. Do you have to bleed the air out? I'm going to have to research that. I haven't heard anything like that. But this transmission is fully uh, fully new clutches and everything's back together. Time to put it back in the car. If you want to lay down, just lay down on the ground, cocaine. Again, I must stress, if you are lifting this transmission off the ground by yourself, be very careful. You can hurt yourself. <laughs> 
I say this because it has taken me four hours to wiggle this damn thing back onto the engine. Be careful. I did discover an easier way to turn the flywheel though, the line the torque converter bolts up. Take a screwdriver, just wedge it between the transmission and the steel teeth on the flywheel. Takes a little longer, probably takes about you know, a minute and a half, two minutes doing it one tooth at a time, but it's better than reaching over and trying to turn the engine block when you, I mean, in this way you can see exactly where it is. So. Also, if you're having trouble placing your flywheel bolts, just use a magnet, put it on there and you can fish it up in there and get it right in the hole. Because it's hard to get your fingers in there to do it. Got to bring that forward a little more, one more tooth. There go. Your magnet. And just fish it right in there. Take your finger, pull the magnet back, and there you go. Tighten her up. Oh, and by the way, that extra bolt that I had uh, at the end of the reassembly, I found out that's the bolt that holds the transmission cooler line uh, support. I'm glad I figured that out because that was really bugging me that I had an extra bolt. I mean, I spent three hours rewatching that disassembly video because I thought I missed something. Say hello to my little friend. I call him Axel Foley. And this is his good friend, Satters. That's my Foley. God, Beverly Hills Cop 2 or, no, 3 and 4, I think it was. 2 was all right. 3 and 4 were so damn stupid. I mean, Beverly Hills Cop, the original, perfection. You just can't duplicate that. Then they made 2, which was not all that great, but it was good to see the guys again. And then they come out with the other ones. I have one in there in a theme park and they're in a zoo or some shit. I mean, just outright stupidity. Got it up and running. And you know what? I got a leak in the bottom of the side side gasket. Luckily, I think I can fix that without taking the whole transmission out again. Let it cool down and we'll see what's going on there. It was leaking right out of that Torx 40. Once I backed the torque off it, the leak stopped. I pulled it out. I mean, there's nothing coming out of it now. I think I just had it over torqued. Yeah, we got another problem. You know that dipstick tube that I trashed in the beginning? We're going to have to replace it. It's leaking out of that seal. I went down to O'Reilly and bought a new seal, but, uh, I mean, I, I don't like that tube anyway. It's got a bend in it. I'm just going to go up and order one. They're like 30 or 40 bucks. We'll just replace the whole tube, put the new seal in when we do that. Took it for a short test drive. It seems to be shifting fine. But uh, I knew I had a little bit of a leak, so it wasn't that long of a drive. And now I come back to discover. I did fix the leak that I had, that Torx bolt. I, I, did, I, I did get that stopped with some, um, what do you call it, some gaskets. I took that bolt out and I just uh, wiped it down with that gasket sealer. And I put it in there, just hand tightened it, and it just went like a quarter turn. And it seems to have sealed fine. It's not leaking there at all anymore. But we are going to have to replace the dipstick tube seal. And I'm going to go ahead and order the new dipstick because that one's trashed anyway. Oh, boy. I actually got it for a really good price on eBay. $38.74 with free shipping, free four-day shipping. We'll have it by March 22nd. This is the OEM part. See, uh, those of you who have been following me since the beginning of this thing know what happened to the original dipsticks, too. But I took the transmission out the first time. It was hanging by the tube because I forgot to disconnect it from up top. So it's not like a simple bend. I mean, this the dipstick tube for this particular vehicle has got all kinds of special, let's see down here, right down here on this arm is where you put this seal, and then that goes into the transmission, and that's where my leak is right there. But it makes a unique bend here, it makes another unique bend here, you got a mounting clip there, it makes another unique bend, and then another one, and then another one. So this is not like a standard, I mean, of course this vehicle, that's why they only made it for a few years, because shit like this. So I'm not complaining though, 38 bucks, that's not bad. You know, O'Reilly, I think, wanted like 60-something, and they had to order it from GM, and it was going to take like a month to get it on eBay. I'll have it in four days. So this is a good time to stop and make a video. I got the transmission rebuilt. I took it for a short drive. It shifts like butter from what I can tell, although I didn't go far because I knew I was leaking fluid. I left a puddle of fluid on O'Reilly's parking lot. I'm so sorry. I try not to leave fluid where I go. <laughs> That sucked, but, you know, I went down there to at least to get the seal. And then I figured, you know what, replace the whole tube because it's all bent out of shape anyway. You might as well put it back in factory. That way I know it'll seal good when I put the new seal in. 
and then we'll take it for the, the ultimate test drive, get it out on the highway, see how it goes. But so far, so good. We'll get these leaks stopped, and then, uh, you know, we'll see you on the next one.